we're in the warm weather of Florida. We got here last night. We are Heart Not Life and we love traveling adventures and selling. We decided to sell almost everything we owned and leave the 9 to 5 in Canada for the adventure of a lifetime, selling where the wind takes us. We bought a boat thinking it wasn't going to be a project boat and after two months of working on the hard, we realized how much work it needed. We finally set sail and made our way to and through the ICW and beyond. Follow our adventures every Sunday and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a new episode. Good morning everyone! As you can tell, we're in the warm weather of Florida! We got here last night and oh my god, it's so warm! I can't believe it! Yesterday we were wearing sweaters and tooks and today we're wearing shirt sleeves. Just like that. From winter coat and a sweater and a toque yesterday morning. Oh my gosh, there's so many dolphins. Every couple of minutes I see a dolphin coming. Yeah. Last night it was kind of a, a tough situation trying to get through the lock and the bridge. We calling. Couldn't, we couldn't do it within daylight hours. So we went through one triple bridge after Cape, we came in Cape Canaveral. We passed a, well you'll see in the video, a giant carnival cruise ship in the channel. The camera died. And that happens all the time. Thank you GoPro for the very weak batteries. Yeah. <laughs> We're waiting for a shipment that has more batteries because we can't fill more than like 20 minutes and our batteries dead. Hi everybody, it's there, you can at least wait. We're so happy, so we, we came, made it. We, saw, we passed the cruise ship and then we go through a triple lift bridge and immediately after the triple lift bridge you're in a tiny channel waiting for the lock. A tiny, tiny, tiny channel. So you change channels and you, you call the lock to get a passage to the lock and immediately realize that he's not answering. So we call him again and we call him again. I call him while I'm sideways now in this channel trying to keep from blowing onto the shore. I call him about 12 times on the radio. So eventually called back to the to the lift bridge and asked them what's going on we can't reach them on channel 13 she said she doesn't have the phone number for her so mary looked up the phone number real quick and we called. We called the phone rings and rings and rings and rings i'm like what is this guy doing and he's stuck on the toilet while we're in the channel because like, we've been sitting here in the dark now for a while and it feels like you can reach up and touch the sides of this channel there's, there's no room to turn around I'm thinking like at this point like we're going to be hankering inside this channel for the night after a while he doesn't even answer the radio, he just starts opening up the, the lock. So I called him again, he's like, oh yeah, come on in through when the light turns green, wear your life jackets. <laughs> I don't know if he didn't have his radio when he went somewhere, but yeah, that was kind of nerve-wracking. Yeah. He, he, he should know that when the triple bridge goes up, somebody's coming. They're not raising a triple bridge for nobody, and that's not a good time to go take a big massive dump. So but we're so happy we, we made through. it. We got through. I remember when you said like, oh, we're gonna get there like at dark. But yeah. it's okay. We're it's not Do you remember? Yeah, we decided to go for it because there was not really much option for us at that point. Like we got to go through or we're gonna try to find a, a slip for a hundred dollars a night in a busy marina with cruise ships. I, I was like three dollars a foot in there. Decided to go for it. Luckily, immediately after the lock is where our, the anchorage is that we're trying to get to. And we eventually got through the lock and we go to drop anchor we pull up to this anchorage and there's like i couldn't even tell how many boats like over 10 boats without anchor light people turn on your anchor light the majority of the boats there didn't even have a light on so you can't really even tell how many boats were anchored there i just see these little shadows so we anchored like on the outskirts of the anchorage because I, I didn't want to navigate in through there. And uh, it was fine. I mean, anchor held great, beautiful weather. We could hear a dolphin breathing beside the boat. Every couple of minutes you hear, Psh! But it feels great yeah, it to feels be great. in the warm Wake weather. up in the morning and like you put a t-shirt on and, and that's it. That's it. Thank God. We finally made it to warm weather. Yay. All worth it for this moment. <laughs> <laughs>
Hello everyone, we are in Ugali Basin of Florida. It's a beautiful day. We just came back from my, spending a few days at my mom's house where I took advantage of ordering some stuff from Amazon. Today, we are going to install a barbecue. If you have a boat, you've probably seen West Marine in that barbecues. They're insanely expensive for what they are, four, five, six hundred dollars. We got this beauty right here for just over a hundred dollars. I really thought it was going to be smaller and crappier, but this thing looks like it's great quality. It's all stainless steel. There might be some little parts that aren't stainless steel as advertised, but I'm going to put some corrosive resistance spray on there to protect it and the difference between this and a marine one is basically going to be how it mounts onto your boat well we have a wooden stern rail and they have these folding legs here so i'm going to install these onto our stern rail and make a bracket to replace this that's going to be supported from the lower part of the stern rail so i hope this is beneficial for you this will save you a lot of money instead of spending hundred dollars on a barbecue you can spend a hundred bucks on one you use it out for a few years four or five years, whatever, when you're sick of it, throw it out and replace it and have a brand new barbecue instead of spending all that money on a one that might just last a little bit longer. Uh, so we're gonna get started here. So this is where I'm at now. I reused that bracket and I just added a base on the bottom to raise it up a bit. It needs to go a little bit higher. So for now, I'm gonna add this inside of there, bolt all of them together, and that should conclude it for now until I find some better hardware. Uh, ideally, bringing this up a bit higher will make it more level. So as I come across more hardware, I'll probably modify this bit, make it a little bit better. But for now, um, this will be able to work for us. So that's how I went about doing this. I'll put a little safety rope on there so I don't lose my new barbecue overboard. Then we can unlatch it, open it up, and it's as level as it's going to get for now. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped somebody realize that you don't have to buy the most expensive thing to make a small project work. This works for me. If it lasts a few years for me, that's great. If not, I'll replace it. I can update the hardware as I go to make it more perfect, but this will do the trick. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next week.